Let's factor a squared minus 9. Do you recognize difference of squares? a times a is a squared. We write plus minus. What times what is 9? We have 3. So in general, when we have x squared minus y squared, we can factor this to be x plus y and x minus y. Here our x is a and our y is 3. So let's factor again with difference of squares. What times what is 9x squared? We have 3x times 3x is 9x squared. We write plus minus. And what times what becomes 25y6? We have 5y3. So it happens that a equals 3x and b equals 5y cubed. This question essentially is asking factor a squared minus b squared. So we could write it this way. 3x squared minus 5y cubed squared. We have our a squared minus b squared. So the answer is going to be a plus b, a minus b, which we have directly up here. Now when factoring, it's always a good idea to pull out the GCF. The greatest common factor here is 2x. We have x squared minus 9, because when we multiply this out, distribution, we get 2x times x squared is 2x cubed, 2x times negative 9 is minus 18x. But don't stop here. Let's continue factoring using difference of squares. We'll set up our nice brackets. We have x plus 3, x minus 3 as our fully factored answer. Now let's factor this trinomial. This here is called trinomial factoring, where the coefficient of x squared, a, equals 1. And this is done by setting up some brackets and guessing. What times what becomes x squared? The answer is x, because x times x is x squared. Next, we have to think about the constant. Think of the number negative 10. What times what becomes negative 10? If you're not sure, we can list out all the possibilities. Just focus on the actual number, forget the sign. 1 times 10 is 10, and so is 2 times 5. Now the challenge is to find two numbers that multiply to be negative 10, but add to be the coefficient of x, which is negative 3. When we add these two numbers, with some variation of plus or minus in front of them. Which one feels like a 3? 1 and 10 are too far apart. So let's choose 2 and 5. Let's write 2 and 5 and try to fix the signs. The goal is negative 3, so why don't we put the negative in front of the bigger number and put a positive here. Now let's verify it. We have positive 2 times negative 5 indeed is negative 10. That's great. And when we add the numbers, we have negative 3. So this here is the correct factored form. So for this question, we're now going to do trinomial factoring where a is not equals to 1. Or we could say a is greater than 1. In this case, a equals 6. There's two ways to do this. One is by guessing, and one is called rainbow method. Let's just try guessing. When the numbers are small, this could arguably be faster. What times what becomes 6x squared? Now it could be 6x times 1x, or it could be 2x times 3x. So we're not quite sure, but we're going to guess. Why don't we try guessing with 2x times 3x is 6x squared? So 3x times 2x is one possible answer. And what times what is negative 2? Let's just guess. Let's try 2 and 1. We have 6 and 4 does not make negative 1, so we guessed incorrectly. Now let's try 1 and 2. So we have, doing FOIL on the outside, we have 3x and we have 4x. This looks promising. Let's try a minus and a plus here. We have 
positive 3x minus 4x indeed is negative 1, negative 1x or negative x. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, so we factored correctly. Now it is challenging to continuously switch the plus and minus signs and switch the numbers and keep on guessing very quickly. There is a more relaxing method called the rainbow method. So let's try the rainbow method of factoring to get this answer. What we do is we multiply the a value by the constant and we copy down the question again. x squared minus x, 6 times minus 2 is minus 12. Now do not write equal, this is just a, a trick. We're going to factor normally what times what becomes negative 12 but adds to be negative 1. Let's try 3 and 4. We'll put a minus here and a plus here. Indeed, we multiply to be negative 12. And we add these numbers and it becomes negative 1. This is correct, but we're not quite done yet. The rainbow method is mentally more relaxing, but it's very long. Pretend this is your number. Your number is number 6. This is your employee number. You write down divided by, for each of the numbers, your employee number, which is 6. You're at the bottom of the company. You're the beginner. Do you right away get to be promoted to be the CEO? And the answer is no. You have to simplify your life first. So let's copy this down again. But instead of writing 3 over 6, we'll write 1 half. And instead of writing 4 over 6, let's simplify. Divide top and bottom by 2. We have 2 thirds. And because this fraction is simplified already, we then promote the denominator in front of x. So we have 2x plus 1, and we have 3x minus 2, which is the same fully factored form.